welcome to the Ringmasters Podcast, Chicago's most trusted source to educate, guide, and give you tips and advice for choosing and purchasing the right diamonds, custom engagement rings, and wedding bands. Here's our expert design chief, Kurosh Dineshkar, and our diamond experts, Maury Taffershi and Terry Hanley. This podcast is brought to you by Chicago's own Wedding Bands and Company, where we believe marriage is too important for ordinary jewelry. Here we are with another episode of The Ringmaster uh, with Terry Hanley and Mori Tafreshi and me, Kurosh Danishka. Uh, today we're going to talk about lab-grown diamond. We uh, get a lot of people that come into the door and ask about lab-grown diamond. And uh, there are a lot of questions about this uh, subject right now. And we want to give you some insight. Uh, I think the first question come is, what is a lab-grown diamond? What's different between mine uh, and lab-grown diamond? And actually, what it is lab-grown diamond? Terry, would you go ahead and... Yes, I mean, uh, again, the, yeah, the lab-grown diamond versus a natural diamond or a mined diamond is kind of how we're talk, just talking it in the industry. Um, the lab-grown diamond is a diamond that is grown in a laboratory environment compared to a mine diamond which is grown which is grown in the earth. Uh, basically all the same, same uh, uh, principles play into it in terms of how it's produced in the laboratory, high pressure, high temperatures, um, and all that kind of good stuff just like it does in, in the earth. The only difference is it is produced, it is, it is created in a laboratory Instead, um, it has all the exact same physical, chemical, and optical properties as the mine diamonds. Um, it looks just like the mine diamond. Every everything involved with it, it is it is diamond. It is just grown in a lab versus developing in a mine. So, uh, Mori, uh, Perry said a little bit about the two method they create a um, lab grown. Um, would you explain a little bit about this? I know we there's not enough information. Every this is a kind of secret for their well, uh, and all of and part of this too. I think we, we should point out to our listeners is that this is all very new. I mean, obviously or inevitably they were originally developed. The process was originally developed in 1955 by GE, so on and so forth. But they're very, very, very new to the market today. So we're all just kind of getting familiar with this and developing this and digesting this. So, Yeah, I mean, as Terry said, uh, as of right now, they have two methods uh, that they're going to produce these diamonds. One of them is called CBD, which is a chemical vapor deposition, and the other one is the HTHP, which is a high temperature, high pressure. And uh, again, we don't have much of a knowledge about details of these processes, but uh, all we know is both of them are uh, done and processed in the laboratory. Uh, and as far as we're concerned as a jeweler, to us, they're, both of them are absolutely gorgeous. They're beautiful. The diamonds, you know, one of the mine diamonds, the other one lab grown. It's to me, I always tell my clients that there is just like uh, some people like Porsche, so the other people like a BMW. They're both luxury cars. You know, they're amazing, uh, but it's a difference of uh, you know, opinion or matter of different perception, which one you like better or more. So uh, also, I seen a, a documentary from BBC, which they were showing another method, uh, which they use laser to create lab-grown diamond. It was just a very little information but we don't know who's using that uh, method as uh, part of their process. Interesting process. And you were saying, I think, that they actually do it on a 3D printer. 3D so, printer. So like similar to what we use on, well, yeah, on, on anything else. So, uh, they were uh, molecule by molecule, they bond the uh, atom or carbon together and they build the diamond in the. Uh, and they come kind of like a cube instead of rounded shape. And uh, I seen some picture online. But however, one of the thing is, uh, I have always customer asking me, can you see the difference? Can you recognize the difference between them? And I want to say no. 
And they're exactly... Well, and you can't. You can't. It's you impossible. Can't. It is yeah. the same physical, chemical, and optical properties yeah. and as, 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 the, as the natural. But I have seen better one, and uh, which uh, we offer in a, a store. That's one of I. Uh, we work with a couple of supplier, and one of the uh, uh, lab we work with, they absolutely process very very high quality, and so uh, always remember, uh, if it could be different laboratory, different scientists, they're gonna create them. All they're gonna send it to independent lab to get the certificate. The certificate is just gonna show what's the color clarity they compared to their system, but it's not showing who's who's the who's like producing. who's producing it. So uh, always uh, we recommend we are the dealer for uh, uh, presenting uh, uh, grown diamond company. So uh, which they absolutely bring this to a state of art and we is i i wish i could uh, show anybody through video it's something you have to see in life and if you come to this store we always have them in a stock and we can show it to you but uh, there is a special tools which you the trade came up you know there the tool we can recognize well and we're rapidly and anxiously working on and developing more processes and instruments to distinguish the difference between the mind and the lab girl. So uh, I want to say as a designer, uh, to me, if with lab grown, you can uh, afford a bigger diamond and it's, you guys okay with it to go with a lab grown, of course the design is going to be more magnificent and nicer. But uh, uh, that's my personal choice and I um, as a designer uh, uh, I am gonna say that I'm, I'm sure I had somebody ask me this did you have you buy a lab grown diamond for your wife I would say not yet <laughs> not yet but I, I would uh, maybe so uh, that's gonna give me more leverage as a designer to design some something very magnificent with bigger diamond a specialty if your girlfriend is to like something a little bit uh, bigger size diamond and is out of your budget this is the best way to go and uh, to go but uh, I, and I know if I ask Terry has a different opinion what do you think uh, if purchasing lab grown compared to well uh, and again yeah I, yeah I you know I have evolved immensely over the last year regarding this. Again, it's just very new to the market. Um, it's it's interesting to watch it taking hold. Um, uh, you know, as I may have mentioned in previous podcasts, I'm probably the biggest bleeding heart liberal you're ever gonna meet, lunatic regarding our environment and, and all of those type of issues. And not that I necessarily push this one way or the other, because there is some real conversation, on it, but um, you know, if if you're looking at it theoretically from an environmental standpoint, there's a lot of positives to it, um, you know. But we'll see as time plays out how that all truly plays out. But um, you know, my opinion is it's it's something pretty cool. It's pretty fascinating. It's 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 very new to the market. Um, um, it 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 definitely is a price difference between the two. There's no way around it especially as you move into the bigger stones, the more significant stones, that's, that, that variance between the naturals and the, and the lab growings are huge. Um, and and I, you know, I think it just gives all of us the capability of, of really getting into something pretty spectacular uh, for, you know, for something perhaps is a little closer to the budget area you have to work with. I want to just say something off of the... Uh subject if you guys uh, for the first time come to our podcast and you hear a noise of train yes we are ne next to the uh, train uh, L in downtown Chicago we are located in corner of Madison and Wabash jeweler row this area be in jewelry business for almost 100 years 100 years plus. Yeah. yeah there well, was yeah. two building with uh, five South Wabash and uh, five uh, North Wabash, which they were all jeweler and dealer on 29 East Madison. And we are right in the corner. And we are, we can say we have a uh, prime location 
uh, and we welcome it. So anybody to our store to come see us. But uh, that's a noise. That's uh, showing who we are and where yeah, we are. Yeah. We have progress. That is the world we live in. Yes. <laughs> yes. So uh, one thing I uh, I am uh, I am I am I am searching. I, I am just curious to see. Um, is is it possible to put a lab or uh, lab to create a lab diamond in somewhere like in here in Five South of Ashwich? There are a lot of production companies. There there are a couple production company. They uh, like uh, they make manufacturing. So and I haven't seen him. There is we haven't seen him. What we see uh, they're mostly in India. There there's some labs in India and uh, Israel, Russia, Russia, yeah. which is there uh, for a long time in this, um, but I, I haven't seen it. I don't know the answer to that either. <laughs> I just, I haven't, I haven't seen the equipment as of yet. My impression though, again, kind of going back to seeing history of it with when GE was doing it way back when in the massive, massive um, equipment that they were using, the production process they were using back then, you know, like everything, as time goes on, it gets more advanced, and the more advanced it gets, the smaller it gets, and the better it produces. Um, so I would think that it's getting down there, that it's getting smaller and smaller, and more effective and more effective. I don't know if they're there yet, but I certainly see the day coming. That, that, yeah. yeah, yeah. Uh, also, I want to uh, mention um, Monsonite here, so people they understand Monsonite. It's totally different it's look. Totally different. Yeah. It's softer. I remember uh, 15 years ago, somebody told me to s I, that time I was a bench jeweler. I was uh, designing and also working on bench. And they brought a stone. They didn't tell me this is a monsonite. And I was trying to set it. And through the process, I chipped it. And then I said, this is can be chipped because. Uh, that, you know, usually when you work, you know, diamond is a strong and you can bend the prong to set the diamond. And after uh, I send it to cut it, to the recut it, and we figure out when I call my client, who was another jeweler at that time, and I told him, you know, this is what happened. And said, oh, it's Monsonite. I forgot to tell you. <laughs> <laughs> so it is totally different. Totally it's softer, yeah. it's yellower. Well, in, in kind of the line of thinking, we used to always hear, or I guess we do still say, that you've got, you have natural, you have synthetic, which lab-grown would be. We also have synthetic sapphires and synthetic rubies, or lab-grown sapphires, lab-grown rubies. And then there's simulants. And the simul the, 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 uh, the synthetic is, again, going to be all the exact same physical, chemical, and optical properties as it's natural. The simulant is looks something like it's not just like, it's uh, not really close, it looks something like. So it's a colorless, uh, clear material, uh, but it definitely doesn't look just like diamond. I, you know, a lot of people will use it, you know, we have the same thing. And, it, as, and again, moissanite and zirconia, or cubic zirconia, or synthetic cubic zirconia, or synthetic moissanite are just those. Those are all man-made or lab-grown stone. Moissanite is lab-grown, cubic zirconia is lab-grown. The natural counterpart does exist somewhere in nature, but in such small increments that, that it's not at all functional to use in the, in the real world. Uh, but that's kind of your difference. So the moissanite or synthetic moissanite or lab-grown moissanite is, but it doesn't, it you know, looks something like, but it doesn't look just like a diamond. So I want to I want to say this uh, so by uh, being 30, 35 years in business. If somebody walk in with a monsonite and I look at it in their hand, I can well, spy it. I can try to say, "Oh, that's monsonite." Yeah, immediately. I, right. I and uh, I can do this by like uh, I have to loop it and look at the facet, and I, I can see. But if somebody come with a lab grown diamond, I can't. I need a tool. And if somebody come with a, with a, a CZ, a cubic zirconia, I can spy it over cross of uh, across the room, room. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> over across yeah. of the street. Yeah. Because sometimes we have people, they come and say, I found this, what do you think? I say, it's CZ, it's yeah. cubic zirconia, yeah. one dollar. Yeah. Uh, go have fun with it. So uh, for us, it's uh, mainly this, but 
if if somebody let's say why if somebody buy a um, uh, cubic zirconium cubic you have a cubic zirconium you yeah. wear it after a week it's going to get dull it get yeah. scratch it because yeah they also tend with time not necessarily a few days but with time they will tend to again there's multiple there's different companies producing at different quality levels but a good number of them will begin to fog up they just yeah. kind of take on a and change the color as well they get a little bit yellowish yeah. Yeah. yeah they're not as stable yeah. Well, yeah. you know it's one of the one of the one of the requirements for something to be considered a gemstone is its long term stability you know diamonds will never change that's that lab grown diamond that synthetic diamond that's produced it's always going to look like it looks today it's yeah. never going to change. A hundred years from now, a thousand years from now, it's going to look like it looks today. And then also, I want to add this. You know, as somebody respect Earth and uh, as far as uh, uh, be eco friendly around uh, our environment, lab grown diamond is very efficient. So, if you think about it, I am guessing maybe. I don't know, but I, I am thinking and, and the lab is going to be two or three people running the lab there and they are watching those chambers to diamond is grow is growing and is the process going to be finished. And then after it's done, it goes to the same process. Any regular diamond goes to the diamond cutter. They cut it and then it goes to laboratory like uh, IGI. Right. So they're going to create in report. And then they is gonna come to, you know, jewelry stores. So it it is the compared to this gonna be a machinery, uh, cutting their you know big mine going and putting people in danger and stuff. So this yeah. part of it is really rec um, recognized with me. Important. Important yeah, to you. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, well, in 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 that is it's that is all very viable conversation and we we don't know the total carbon footprint as of yet in production of the lab growth. So we just we just don't have that it hasn't been being done long enough yet on a large enough scale to have that knowledge but it's certainly you can make you can make some assumptions on it uh, in terms of it compared to mined diamonds so uh, so in the in the as, uh, if Mori can kind of say what's the advantage of to buying a lab grown diamond compared to price the, price is price a much diamond, one because you know, uh, you paying way less pretty much half of the price based on the market that we've seen in the last couple of years in the more significant side. Uh, yeah for the pretty much exactly the same look exactly the same material so I would say probably if you ask uh, 10 people nine of them is going to say I might go with a lab grown but then again it's all matter of uh, perspective and then the psychology of it that some people will still rather have the you know mine diamond because they say hey this is the diamond but then you cannot say at this point that this is actual diamond and this is a fake diamond because they're both diamonds exactly the same material exactly the same process you know coming from different sources one of them is from the earth the other one's from the laboratory but that's a huge advantage but usually if uh, my client wants to go with the, the smaller diamond I say hey if you're okay with it, you can go bigger and higher color and clarity, pretty much for 30 to 50 percent less price, you know, and you still get the, the same beautiful diamond. Same look, same look. Uh, so, uh, Terry, do you think uh, CVD and HP? H high pressure, high temperature. HP, HT. HT, yes. So, I'm sorry, you were asking me? So, uh, Terry, do you think that having uh, so many lab-grown diamonds, uh, CVD or HPHT is going to affect the diamond price, the, the natural diamond price? Yeah, I mean, there's a lot of conversations on that, obviously, in the industry. Um, will it affect the natural diamonds? The natural are always going to be what they are, which are natural diamonds. Um, you know, there is definitely some attributes to that. Um, you know, I hate to say it again, and I probably say it too often, is you can own a Picasso or you own a copy of a Picasso. Yeah, we're never gonna do that. <laughs> I will, mean, you know, I, yeah. I just, I, 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 I think, think it is a reality that you have to deal with, with this. Yeah, in, I think. In, in the conversation. I think, you, I think we, right now we can say, 
we don't know the price is gonna hold but I think that's the diamond price always is gonna stay mine diamond they it's always gonna stay or yeah. does that become even pretty much better? if you look at the market that the mine diamond in the like the last 10 years right pretty much has been staple but then uh, it has been due to the economy ups and downs you can see a little bit of difference like three percent but it's not going to be 50 percent less or more so let me ask the question so we can cut it here yeah. oh i know okay. because we have to make sure i think that's a out. that's a natural aspect it's not bad to have in there yeah but i think just just uh no it's going to washed up everything you okay say. i think okay. you should say okay i won't say it. Okay. okay so uh so the main uh, one of the biggest question is coming is CVD diamond and HPHD diamond is going to affect the price of the natural diamond? What do you think, uh, Maury? I don't think it's going to, I mean, obviously it will, but as of right now, we don't know. Because for the mine diamond, we've seen it for the last, or I've seen it for the last 20, 30 years. So I can see that it's been pretty consistent. But then the lab grown has been in the market probably a couple of years, very active. Probably it's been in the market for 10 years, but not this active and popular but we don't know what's going to come in next five years or next 10 years we have to wait and see it could go either way i don't know you know yeah we just don't know the answer yeah man as of yeah where where are these going to take the industry to dollars so um we, we can talk about the that diamond girl uh, on the side ring that's that's and i was just we could talk about it in mali yeah in the use of mali but so the next subject is coming, uh, let's say you pick your lab grown diamond in the center for a setting and then we are designing a ring. Is it a good idea to, uh, uh, what's the suggestion will be for side diamond? Are we going to use the side diamond as well? Uh, they're going to be lab grown or they, they're, they're not. So my answer is, is not necessary because when you get to milli size, the label to cut for a milli is mostly the uh, mostly the uh, cost effect of the diamond. The label so cost. The label cost. So it's better to you stay with a natural diamond, and uh, it's it's not going to make any difference in the pricing. So it's in the, this point, let's get everything natural yeah. for the size. And, and again, and, and, and again, this is all very new to us. I mean, we're not, but. I have not seen a huge volume of Melly in terms of, we, in the trade we use the term Melly, very small, small stones. Um, I haven't seen a, a huge supply out there and available. I'm sure it's coming as time goes on here. It'll come more and more and more. But um, so right now is in terms of getting well-matched stones, things like that. I, I'm not familiar with, I'm not familiar enough yet with what the market's providing. But um, yeah, it's it, your cost differences between the two, just because everything comes out of labor costs are probably not going to be that dramatically different. Yes. Uh, I think the first thing I, I recommend uh, is always compare. Like even, uh, let's say you guys decide to go with the lab grown, uh, just have the mine and side by side and compare. And this way you, you see the difference and uh, that's something but for the side diamond on the setting i recommend definitely with the mine diamond because uh, two reason there is uh, you don't have to customize it to you're gonna get the di lab grown diamond and put it there are a lot of existing design already and this way uh, is more economical and you have more open option in terms of something already produced yeah already produced, already produced. setting the lab grown La center stone into into that yeah and then uh, it's not going to make any difference so uh, one thing uh, i haven't seen if somebody in the market for a big neck big necklace maybe a you know 50 carat yeah so if you do something like that, that's coming. <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah. That's gonna yeah. be a that's, big. That's difference. what we're gonna start to see a lot of coming it. here very quickly. Very quickly. Yeah. And then we are. Uh, I am. Uh, I am looking forward to see a, a necklace like that, so I can work, the order lap run and put it together to see what's the end result. But that's one of the possibility. People, they might be gonna get something which worth 
hundred thousand dollar for thirty thousand for forty thousand right. right. dollars. So that's uh, that's a that's a nice uh, nice thing to see is gonna come up from that. So we offer lab grown embedding bands company. Feel free to stop by. We can show you. Uh, lab grown and mine diamond we can put side by side we uh, I always said we are uh, we are a sh uh, vehicle ship to uh, take you to destination and you are the captain we show you all the possibility and we make sure you get there safe and but you are the one who take the direction and uh, I love the people that come to our company and uh, we listen to them not try to sell them something and uh, i think people they have uh, option and sources to make their own decision if somebody goes to the store and they try to push you to their benefit that's uh, not ethic and here in bedding them we educate you we show you we guide try you. to guide you and one of the thing i want to say here we uh, we had many many cases and we had many happy customers is if you find something online and you search for a diamond and you found it on blue nile james allen just show it to us when we match the price because in the end this is uh if you we I, we for us is the same uh, just bring it up and we uh, do our best uh, because we like to uh, make a relationship with our customer that has more value for us to just uh, just make another sell online and, and not most of the time as you said you know we have uh, it's not like two million vendors for these stones we pretty much have the same access that those companies have mm -hmm. and if you're really interested and you want to challenge us go find your stone on their website and tell us okay i want this stone and I ask you to leave a deposit and I get you exactly the same stone. Exactly. Because it's the same vendor, but then pretty much, if you look at it, there are another, you know, 500 or 1,000 jewelry on jewelry row. So it's all different markups. Uh, because we've been in the market for, you know, 20, 22, 25 years in this business. It's, we have way more clients. So, and the, you know, our vendors have been working with us for a long time and we purchase way more diamonds than any other companies. So we get huge discounts. So we have a better leverage to work with you guys. And if you think you cannot, give us a chance. Yes. That's all I can say. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you so much for joining us. Uh, looking forward to see your email, uh, your uh, thoughts. Send us email, send us, uh, uh, you know, Instagram, find us on the internet. And we mostly looking forward to see your face in our store. Welcome uh, anytime and we be uh, looking forward to it. And if you're out of town and you cannot come to see our faces, you can go to our website and then we can you know, FaceTime with you or if you're in California or New York, we can just work through email, anything. anything. We can go, that's you true. can be in Canada or that's London. True. That's true. Because you can, anybody can hear this podcast all around the world. That's true. Yeah. So absolutely, thank you so much. Uh, thank you. Have thank you. Day. Have a good one. This podcast is brought to you by Chicago's own Wedding Bands and Company, where we believe marriage is too important for ordinary jewelry.